Hello students, in the current video I will explain the concept of residential status. This is the first video on residential status. Uh, this will be covered by section 6 of the Income Tax Act 1961. In this video I will cover what is residential status, why residential status is determined, how to determine residential status of an individual, basic conditions and additional conditions. These concepts I will be covering in this video. Whereas other videos related to income tax have already been made and I will be sharing the link of those videos in the i button as well as in the description box. Please do watch those videos even. Now the question arises residential status. What is residential status? Residential status is a term used under income tax act and bear in mind it is nothing to do with the nationality of a person. A nationality of a person may be different and he may be resident of India that I will explain you down the line. So precisely bear in mind it is nothing to do with the nationality and it is a term used for income tax purpose. An Indian who is a citizen of India can be a non-resident of India for income tax purpose in the sense a citizen of India can be a non-resident for income tax purpose whereas an American, a resident of America, an American can be resident of India for income tax purpose. In the sense what? A foreigner can be a resident of India only. So that is the reason why you try to understand residential status is no way connected with the nationality that is citizenship. Clear? Then residential status depends on specially and exclusively, wholly and solely. Totally depends upon stay in the geographical or territorial limits of India. If a person, if an individual stays in India within the geographical limits of India, on the basis of that, the residential status will be determined. That is, how many days an individual physically stayed in India. That is very important. Based on that, the residential status will be determined. And the question arises, why residential stated status is to be determined? What is the objective of determination of residential status? Income tax is levied on total income of an SSC. What is SSC? Assessment year, previous year, all those concepts I have explained. We will be sharing the link of that video in the i button as well as in the description box. Please do watch that video for better understanding. So, calculation of total income of each person is based upon residential status. In the sense what? The tax levied on a total income of an SSC and this total income differ from residential status in the sense it is differ from various residential status persons. Section 6 of the Income Tax Act 1961 divides a person into three categories. Ordinary resident, resident but not ordinarily resident, non-resident. These are the three categories are divided that is ordinary resident but not ordinary resident, non-resident. So this is for the purpose of determination of tax liability, determination of and computation of tax liability. For that sake, we require residential status calculation or determination. Residential status of an individual. How to uh, identify the residential status of an individual? As per the Income Tax Act 1961, the residential status of an individual divided into following categories. Category 1 is resident, section 6, subsection 1 and section 6, subsection 1a will define. Under that resident, we have ordinarily resident but not ordinarily resident. Once he becomes resident, we will divide ordinarily but not ordinarily resident. And the second category is non-resident. So for individuals, the three categories will, two categories will be available under first one, ordinarily resident, but not ordinarily resident. These will be calculated. 
Next, how to determine the residential status of an individual? An individual who fulfills any one of the following basic conditions is called as resident. In the sense what? If any individual satisfy any one of the basic conditions, only one. If you satisfy two, that is well and good. But any one, if you satisfy it, then only he will be called as resident. What are those conditions? Basic conditions. First, if he or she is in India during the relevant previous year for the period of 182 days or more. In the relevant, in the current previous year, if he stays for 182 days or more in the geographical or territorial limits of India. That is what stay in India is refers to. 182 days. If he stays in India, he is called as resident. Or, second basic condition, or if he satisfied first one, no need to see the second basic condition. We can straight away determine resident. If we do not satisfy the first basic condition, then we can see the second basic condition. If he or she is in India for 60 days in the relevant previous year, in the current previous year, and 365 days in four previous years preceding the relevant previous year. F preceding the in the sense before the current previous year out of four years, he should stay in 365 days in India. Besides, he should be in India for 60 days in the current previous year. If any one of these two conditions are satisfied, then he will be called as resident. Clear? Any one. If we don't satisfy both the conditions, basic condition, then he will be called as a non-resident straight away. Clear? So I hope I made you understand the basic conditions. Once we understand the basic conditions, now we will take up the additional conditions. These additional conditions will be used to determine the uh, residential status, whether he is ordinarily resident or but not ordinarily resident. These Additional conditions are applied once an individual becomes a resident. If he, if he becomes non-resident, we don't apply these additional conditions. If he becomes a resident, then only we apply the additional conditions to check whether he is ordinarily resident or but not ordinarily resident. If both the additional conditions are fulfilled, he or she can be called as ordinarily resident. Otherwise, we call them as but not ordinarily resident. What are those two additional conditions? The first additional condition is he or she should be resident at least two years out of 10 previous years preceding the relevant previous year. In the sense what? Out uh, In the sense preceding the current previous year out of 10 previous year 10 previous years, he should be resident for 2 years. Again, to become resident, he should satisfy any one of the two basic conditions that you bear in mind. The second additional condition is and, the word we are using and, in the sense we must satisfy, the individual should satisfy both the additional condition. Suppose first additional condition is not satisfied, then no need to see the second additional condition, just directly determine but not ordinarily resident because he did not satisfy the first though he satisfies the second one no significant difference it makes no because both the additional conditions has to satisfy so the second additional condition is he or she should be in india for 730 days out of seven previous years preceding the relevant previous years in the sense what out of the seven preceding relevant previous years he should stay in india 730 days these are the two additional conditions. If these two are satisfied, <coughs> sorry, then we will be called as ordinarily resident. Otherwise, we call them as but not ordinarily resident. I hope I made you understand the entire crux of the basic concept of the residential status. I will make uh, videos down the line based on problems. Please do watch the videos and try to understand the concept. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching the video. Do subscribe my channel, Mentor the Trusted Guide. Thank you very much.